Today I have this Fraganer Cascadia from the year 2010. The problem of this Fraganer Cascadia is then when you start the truck in the mornings, it takes forever to recharge the tank, the air pressure from the air tanks, or it never does it. So you have to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on until it starts recharging, or, or eventually once it is started and it starts to recharge the air and then it stops. So if that's the problem then you have, because this is the problem then this Fraganer Cascadia is having, I'm going to tell you what is the solution for it. It's a simple solution but no easy to repair it. <laughs> so, um, for that you're gonna need this over here. This part over here, this is the unloader valve. That's the name of this one, which is this one over here. This is the brand new part over here. So what this does is then this is the valve that goes on top of the head of the compressor, the, of the compressor, the air compressor, and this is the one then opens and closes the compressor when it's time to recharge or when it is time not to recharge, when it's time to stop the compressor and it does the discharge. So this valve is the one in charge of that. It comes with this little cap over here and I wanna show you where it goes. So that one goes all the way over here. You have to remove all this, get under, and it goes right there, right here. See, over here. There is the orifice over there. It's really hard to see it. All you have to do is to remove these 25 T25 bolts that are holding this plug over here. This little bracket, this little uh, cover, and it has a gasket. In this case, the gasket was uh, stuck on the cap, but in some cases, it gets on the compressor and that's super hard to remove it. In this case, this is a 2010 Fraganer Cascadia, and we have room. But if you have a 2013 and up, you don't have no room over here. Everything is covered with hoses, cables, and brackets. And that is super hard to remove. That little piece of uh, bag that was there is really hard to remove. So, this part over here, this top, is the one that gets stuck over here. And when the air compressor needs to recharge, this doesn't open. And it stays closed, uh, telling the air compressor then you don't need air, and that's the reason it never recharges the system. But this is only if you are um, not getting air to the tanks, you're not getting air to the tanks, but you don't have leaks. If you don't have leaks and you don't get in, uh, air to the tanks, this is the problem. But if you have a big leak, then this won't be the problem. So just double check that before you replace this because then later you're gonna be like, a, oh, uh, uh, it, it, it wasn't the problem. Yes, because it wasn't the problem. So um, uh, this is super hard to replace, as I said before, super hard to replace because of the limited room over there. But in this case, um, we have room, but for the newer ones, it's like super tight, super hard, and uh, this thing, so what you have to do is like, as soon as you open the little thing over here, you have to remove this thing from there, from the compressor over there. You have to remove the two bolts over here, T25s. And then you remove the top, this top, you remove it out, easy. And then you remove the, the spring, there is a spring over here, you can see. Spring is just to uh, keep the piston uh, floating up and up, uh, uh, down, uh, up and down, and we have the cylinder. This is the cylinder we can call it. It has these two seals over here and one seal in, in inside. You can see there. So you have to remove this from inside. To remove this from inside, what you have to do is get a flat screwdriver like this one, 
and place it in this area over here and then pray it up until it comes out it's super hard to do it because in this this in this case this one was super stuck and took me like 10 minutes to get it out but in some cases can be easy and some cases can be even harder and remember that these balls are super super easy to destroy because they are 225 and uh, if you don't uh, do a good job removing them you can destroy them and then it will be super hard to uh, to uh to to remove it and then won't be you won't be able to remove this valve and then you will have to remove the compressor to remove this and that is going to cost a lot of money but this is the way this part costs around like 60 dollars it is not too expensive but the labor to replace it it is so it is just a quick uh, video about that uh, I wanted to I, I was going to do how to replace it but it's super hard to go with the hand and holding the bolts and everything little details so I just explain you the details how to do it it's simple but to ask uh, to get access to that that's the complicated part so I want to show you the new item ah, also um, it's very important that you replace the uh, governor. This is the governor, the new governor for the uh, air compressor. At the same time, you replace this. It is just to prevent problems. You don't have to, but it is better if you do it. Let's see what we have here. Um, so it comes with the instructions that nobody reads. And here is the kit. The new seal, the new gasket will be, this is a gasket, the new O-rings for the piston, for the, for the cylinder, and the new piston and the new spring, and some grease over here, you can see this is grease. Uh, that grease is to lubricate the O-rings and to lubricate the piston, so it can slide easily. Pretty simple, nothing complicated. And then to install it, you just push it back, everything there, and then just like hold the bolts and everything. To install it is easier to remove it than removing it. Uh, but the limitation of room is the uh, complicated part. But uh, this is pretty much all I'm going to show you. Uh, also, if you're gonna replace the air, uh, the air governor, replace the fittings all the time because it's very uh, important fittings. Uh, so that's about it so that's all i'm going to tell you about this uh little little repair then takes a lot of time to do it especially if you have no experience when you have experience it's easy but um, still sometimes it's super hard as, as i said before if you have a 2015 cascadia or 2013 and up that that is just like super hard i'm telling you because i have done those and Man, uh, I don't know. I don't know why they decided to put so many hoses over there, but that's the newer styles, right? All right. So if you have any questions about the video, just make sure to um, comment in the comment section below, where um, you can leave any questions, any suggestions, any recommendations or experience you have of these problems. Remember, this problem is about when the tanks are not getting air pressure. The, uh, and there is no air leaks remember that when there is air leaks you have to fix that freeze and then go to the next step it is just for you to be clear on this and uh, yeah that's pretty much all uh, I wanna, uh, wanna, if you wanna well I wanna keep doing more videos uh, I, wanna, I, want, I want to change a little the way I do the videos but it will take a, a time to do that but still like it is just my mind right now anyway uh if you want to send support to my channel make sure to uh check the description of the video below where i have details how to send support to my channel so i can make helpful videos for you uh drivers owner operators mechanics as well i know many mechanics watch my videos thank you and um Make sure to like the video, very important. Subscribe to my channel so I can uh, feel confident to keep doing more videos like this. And um, thank you for watching.